my name's Marion Rose and I'd love to know whether you're a mother who really strives to be aware and conscious and you really want to bring your child or your children up without punishments or rewards, with listening to their feelings, with really understanding them, with really giving them everything that they need to flourish. And yet at times do you still find yourself getting really frustrated when they won't get in the car or they won't brush their teeth or they won't get off the iPad or they won't come to dinner and you find yourself just getting so frustrated that you that you shift into this sense of powerlessness and you either just kind of go oh you give up or you just really hate the feeling of powerlessness so much that you that you end up resorting to getting a bit harsh or a bit shouty or you try to make them do things or you get authoritarian or you you end up doing things that maybe were done to you when you were a child and that you swore you would never do and then afterwards you just feel so uncomfortable and in such pain because it's the last last thing that you ever wanted to do to your children you, you never imagined that you would and if that's so I want to say that pretty much every mother that I've ever worked with over the past 10 years has told me that they've had that kind of experience and I am really passionate about supporting, inspiring, encouraging mothers to really claim our power as mothers, to know how, how much of an influence we have over our children, and, but also to understand why these kinds of things happen. And I think there are often many reasons, and one of the main reasons we, we pop into those powerlessness places is that we get reminded of times when we were powerless as children. We remember or we're remembering the feeling more often that went with perhaps when uh, the teacher was authoritarian with us, where we really um, we wanted to be heard, or we wanted to make a choice, or we really wanted to do something, or we really didn't want to do something. Maybe we really didn't want to study French, we wanted to do Italian, or, or we were younger and we just wanted, we were hungry and it wasn't lunchtime yet at school, or maybe we had a medical procedure when we were a baby or a child or a teen and it's nothing like medical procedures and having things done to our bodies that that create a sense of powerlessness or maybe it was one of many other things where we felt powerless as children and what happens in the present moment with our children is they're we're wanting some choice we're wanting to that choice to to go out in the car to go shopping or to take them to school or to whatever it is and they are not cooperating and and that sense of not having choice takes us back down the rabbit hole into that original experience of powerlessness and that sense of powerlessness feels so incredibly uncomfortable in our bodies there's nothing like powerlessness to feel so uh, that we just don't want to feel it and so to avoid that feeling of powerlessness that's why we often resort then to using our greater power our greater uh, physical power or a greater intellectual power to actually make our children do things because we just cannot stand being in that powerlessness place for more than a few moments so that's one of the reasons why we end up doing that and there are other reasons too there are collective beliefs about parenting about mothers about women about children and those beliefs around power and choice have been going on for, for generations upon generation and have really Im impacted on our parenting so that up until very recently parenting was about parents having power over children and making them do things and that's why so many of us have these powerlessness what I call sweet spots these sweet spots up here that take us down the portal or the rabbit hole to that original experience because parenting has been for so long about power over children making them do things even that we didn't want to do and so there are all these pieces over here which create this, these sweet spots and, and then we go back to these experiences. So the way I work with helping us as mothers so that we're less and less likely to do those things that we really don't want to do to our children, but also on the other hand that we don't just resort to permissiveness and just kind of letting them do anything and, and not getting our needs met, that's not, that's not helpful, that's not power either is really working on these two pieces. So shifting core beliefs around power and around parenting 
and working with powerlessness. And there's a third piece that comes from there, which is also about really claiming our power in our bodies. That's, I'm not going to be talking so much about that today. But I really want to talk today a bit more about this powerlessness piece because what I really see in my own journey is that it's our discomfort with the powerlessness that makes us skip over it and, and then act in those harsh ways that we later regret. And one of the main shifts we can make is to actually start to be more friendly with those powerlessness places in ourselves. We can start to be more compassionate. We can start to widen our capacity to be with those feelings and to start to understand them and be with them in ways that mean we're not jumping over them and then resorting to power over. Because actually just being in them for a little while and being with that vulnerability of, ah, oh, oh, you know, ouch. As if we were being with a, a little three-year-old child who's who's feeling incredibly powerlessness, powerless. So being with that her with tenderness and with gentleness and with compassion and with love. And being with ourselves in that way means we start to open and open and open so we have more capacity to be with those memories of powerlessness. I actually have a particular process I call the power portal process. Where we actually go through this in a very structured way. But for now, what I wanted to really give to you is that sense of how would it be for you if when you do get those sweet spots stroked, when you do go down the rabbit hole or the portal into that original powerlessness experience is just to start to even be with it for even for a few seconds. Like, ah, here this is again. You might even be curious about what memory this is, what how age, how, how age, how old you might have been. And just to start to just just for a few moments even to be compassionate with yourself because what happens in power over is that there's disconnection disconnection from ourselves disconnection from our children have you ever found that when you're in that place where you're frustrated and you end up doing something is you're not really seeing your child in that moment you're not seeing their eyes you're not seeing how much you love them they become more like a thing or an it they've actually usually become the parent or the child, and the parent or the teacher, and we have become the child. So we're not seeing them at all. We're not connected with them. We're also not connected with ourselves. You probably felt that for yourself too. You're kind of out of your body almost. So even just taking a few moments to start to, ah, just to, to be for a few moments with ah, this, this powerlessness, this younger part of me, this compassion for this part, can mean we're so much less likely to, to jump over it into having power over. Because when we start to be gentle with this part of us, we connect with ourselves. And when we connect with ourselves, we start slowing down. And when we start slowing down, we actually look at our child and they are no longer, the mask has come off, they're no longer, the screen has come off, they're no longer our parent or our teacher or the doctor who did those things to us. To us. They become the five-year-old or the ten-year-old or the thirteen-year-old or the one-year-old we can see them clearly they're a child they have far less power than us and we can start to connect in with compassion for ourselves and compassion for them in this tricky situation that we're in and we're more likely to be able to find a way of meeting everyone's needs because we've simply opened our heart to the painfulness of powerlessness and probably they might be feeling some powerlessness in that moment because often when children say no or won't cooperate they're either feeling disconnected which is what we came back to or, or powerless in that moment so feeling compassion for that powerlessness in ourselves means we have more capacity to be compassionate with the powerlessness feelings in our children and then everything's likely to go more well because there's just more more connection and True power for me is about connection. When we're really truly connected with ourselves and our child, then there's true connection and there's true power. And from there, there are so many possibilities about where we can take action from. So if this resonates with you, I'd love to, for you to just to, to sink into being a little bit more compassionate with those powerlessness places in you. And if you'd like to really dive in deeply into this process, this isn't for everyone, but if you if you are one of the people who are called to do this, 
I have a power and powerlessness in parenting course and this this is where we're really going into so much more depth into these historical pieces into our own power practices into the power portal process so that we can lessen and lessen and lessen those amounts of times where we act in ways that we regret towards our child or children so if you're interested I'd love for you to come and have a look it's power and powerlessness in parenting.com slash invitation and I'd love to see you there